we're going to go into some options, some techniques when you're closing the distance. What to do then? Now what happens is the realistic fact comes into play. Now this is when you have to be skilled in other arts. Okay? You might have to get into maybe a ground grappling situation. Maybe a grappling situation standing up. You might have to have and use and apply judo if you have the knowledge. But I'll tell you one thing, after you learn how to cut the distance on a person, and after you close the distance down from a person, you better know something else other than kicking and punching because that's going out the window. Your karate, your stand up, kicking and punching, taekwondo type arts, out the window because it does you no good. No good whatsoever. I'll show you with the man with the suit and then I'll show you without the person, a person wearing the suit. Very, very, very important that you understand this fact. You must have training in something else. You cannot just do one thing because like I showed you in the previous tapes that I work with, defense in certain situations on stairwells and elevators and all this, you have to be multi-skilled and talented as far as self-defense training is concerned. When you, we're doing it without the gloves now so you can get a little bit more realism. When you put your hands up, you don't put your fingers out so he punch into your fingers and snap your fingers back and your hands move. Use your palm like focus mitts. Use your palm on your hands like focus mitts. Let that guy stay there and you let him punch right into your hands. And no matter what, when he's punching, don't do this. Don't let your hands buckle as he's punching. Buckle, buckle, buckle. Now you're back into that. Remember that jab situation again? Now you're right back there again. You have to keep the arms out. Keep them out. You move, you relax. On the ball of your feet, pain. And when you shot, now you move the hand down. Now, very fast, what do you think is going to happen here? He's going to stay here? Hell no, he's not going to stay there. When you do this, that man's coming right around and grab you, bam, throw you down as fast as he possibly can. And that'll happen in seconds. The legs, the knees have to come up. Move slow so I don't catch you in your face. When the man's coming up, when he's jabbing and I'm shocking, and I come in right there. You turn this around. Look at that. Here. Boom. He's going to come to try to grab me, but the knee, the knee has to be there. That knee has to be an automatic. Because you know what's going to happen. Basic common sense. Man's going to go for it. He's going to go for it. Watch the opposite side. Jack, shot, come in. He's going to go for it. Now, if you don't have skills from here, you are going down. And you are going to wind up in what they call the, or being a victim of the man putting you in the mounted position. Where he'll take you down, where he'll punch, He'll jab, I shock, I come in, he'll take you down, and now he's on top of you, and you in trouble. You in trouble, in big, big trouble. So now you have to learn how to use your ability to shock, close the distance, gonna take me down, move, shock him, move this man around. So that don't happen. So that don't happen to you. You don't get caught out there. But the person is gonna try for your legs, he's gonna what they shoot call shooting for your legs. If you do this, he's going to shoot for your legs or he's going to go for your waist. And you better know how to use the elbow and the knee. And when he shoot for the legs, bring the legs back, move the body around so you can start using your circular motion to take yourself out of harm's way. Very important. Very, very, very important. So as far as technique is concerned, it's not saying to yourself, this is technique number one, this is technique number two, this is technique number three. You don't know. Once you slap them hands down, once you're here and you're firing off, the guy may come with a second punch. And I come in. Now I close this is here. You understand? What is he going to do from here now? What is he going to do from here? Is he going to come this way? Is he going to turn around and come this way? You got to know what's going to happen. So there's no set technique. You got to be talented enough to understand that you got to go with what we call the flow. Now I'm going to show you some techniques with a person not used, not wearing the suit, so you can get a better idea of some options, some things you may be able to do or may be able to look out for. Okay? Thank you very much. John, please, come on in. Okay? Now, I'm using John, uh, using John because of his size, because this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. guy like John will pick you up and throw you, slam you, bang you, and you're through. That's it. No more fight. And your reverse punch is not going to be effective against the guy 
John sighs when he's hyper and excited. <laughs> That's it, guys. You're gone. You're gone. Look at that. Look how that looks when a guy like this goes, here, look. The hell are you going to do? If you don't understand how, you got to understand he's, he's hyped up. The adrenaline is pumping. So this don't mean nothing. This don't mean nothing. He'll bounce off his chest like bullets on Superman. Don't mean a thing. You have to understand that certain techniques just won't work for you. So don't even bother getting into this idea of trying to pull off something that won't be effective. When you're here, he's jamming, he's finding a way. And you, you get him to look down. You get him to look down. And you try to close the distance here. Take away his vision. Because if you try to mess around and do this with a guy like that, he'll pick you up, scoop you, and now you're someplace else. But if I can get that, and I can come here, move and shock the band, shock, come here automatically. My knee in his face. That knee turn that jaw. That knee turn that jaw real fast in his eyes. Take away his vision in his eyes. As I got his eyes and nose turned. And I don't mess around. I go for the vision. Because the man is too strong, too powerful. Vision. And don't let nobody fool you when you think you're going to be able to get off some artsy type of technique. Throw motion job. Throw the punch. Don't let nobody fool you that you're going to come here and, but hold on a second, don't punch it. Right? Come over here. Turn here. Lock him up here. Take him here. Break him here. You can be please spin. Take him down. Call all around. Pick him back up. Get the hell out of here. You ain't doing that in the street. And I'll pay you good money if you could come to 25 Park Place and do it to him. You can't do it. It's not real. So let's get real. You got to take what you get and learn how to break a man down. If he's coming off that right side and you throw that hand up, bang, you shock, you move very fast. When he comes in, oh, move right into the eyes. Turn, John, please. Right into the eyes before he get a chance to scoop you. Even if he scoop you, scoop, John. And I still, you see? Even if he's scooping, I'm still going for the eyes wall. I got what I want. I got what I want. Now, you may not like to hear that. But you're saying, oh, my God, that's nasty, that's dirty. All right, that's fine. What about your life? What are you willing to do to save yourself? Okay? What are you willing to do to save yourself? The guy in the street is willing to do whatever it takes to take what you have. Now, what are you willing to do to take what you, to save what you got? Hey? The things I'm going to show may not be pretty. You may look at it and say, well, this guy's violent. Or, or no, and I can't teach that to my kid. I'm not asking your kid to do this. This ain't a kid's video. Okay? This is adult self-defense training. And as an adult, you better be prepared, even if it's in your mind, to do whatever it takes to save yourself. And I don't do this out of hate. I do this out of love. Because if you don't love yourself, love your family, love your kids, love your mother, father, sister, brother, your, your spouse, if you don't love the people, not just yourself, but other people in your family, then you won't do this. But if you don't care nothing about nobody, then go ahead and let the person have his way with you. So it's not out of hatred or not out of violence why we do this. We do this out of love because you got to do this because you love yourself. Moving on to the other side. Switch the side. Now we've got a man who's coming here. Matter of fact, let me use Saul. That's a sense of the rule. He's a lefty. He's more natural. Listen. Please. Listen. Now you got to. See, now he's coming from here. He's moving. Now he switch up on you. He switch up on you. Now you see, this is dangerous because now he's coming with the power with the left hand. He's humping the power. Now when that left hand comes power, you, you see what I'm saying? That's a lot of power there. So you got to understand it. You got to have a rhythm and a timing. Keep moving back because this man going to move on you. Now you got to use that leg and you use that leg and watch that hand. Get him to look down it right there. What do you think is happening? Nobody's giving nobody anything. We're trying to fight for position, fight for what we can get. I'm going to show you now how you can use a different type of strategy. But it went on a person who... If he's body, if he's not, he's looking at you, he's a lefty, and he's coming at you, and you find yourself in a different way as you're firing off. As you shot there, and you move that hand, and it don't work for effective as you want. Instead of letting him come and scoop you, you take him. You shoot him. When you got him like this, and you're moving, bang, and he's watching that leg, and he's watching your leg, and you move here. Hey. Take him. Shoot him. I'll show you that in slow motion. Move. You shot the leg. Shot. Get him looking. Boom. Get him. Look here. Turn his face. Look at his body. Leg. Yes. And you know he's coming over fast to kick you. You use the hand. You drop the groin from here. 
that you come in, you can lock, smack them in his groin, and there's a series of leg locks that we go through. But I'm not going through that right now. I'm just showing you options, realistic options. Learning how to use your high, high, moving, bang, get your leg moving, boom, get him moving, get him looking down, get him, get him, get him looking down, get him looking at his leg, shoot, boom, boom, hit. Yeah. And how to use the leg work. Up, please. Use the leg work. Comes around into the leg as it's down. Put the pressure on it. As he hits the floor, let me turn this around. As he hits the floor, from here, boom. When I do this, and he hits the floor, right there, what do you think a man's gonna do? He's gonna try something, boom. Come on, I hold that leg. I don't give this leg up, no matter what. No matter what. Because all you gotta do is stand up. And man, he's right on his neck. You're using the ankle, you snap up on the ankle. Watch from behind. You see the foot? Right here. If this leg, turn your foot like that, side time like a windshield wiper. If you can, his legs can move, you don't have the lock. But if you slide back tight enough, his leg, move your leg please, shouldn't be able to move the leg. And at that point, you lift. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. So you gotta have the ability to go up, to go down, use the knees, use the elbows, head butts, eye gouges, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Now we're moving on. Because I can keep on with breaking it down, breaking it down, breaking it down from all different type of angles. But we're gonna move it on to what if, okay? Left handed please. What if that hook punch comes? That wild hook punch comes? You see how I automatically duck? Because in our school, we practice everything. Everything. A boxer, without no hesitation, no hesitation, any decent boxer, as soon as you come for his head, he's gonna duck and weave you and catch you in your ribs, catch you in your guts. As soon as you come like this, woo, woo, he got you, he got you coming. That's an automatic rhythm. Do karate men have it? No, we don't have, they don't duck, and they don't bob, and they don't weave. They just piff, stay here like this. And when the guy comes for the head, he try to pat, pat. Yeah, you gotta have that flow, that rhythm. Because that ability to duck gives you ability to also work the lower half of the body, not only in strikes, but in core and locks. How to lock up the leg, how to close off the distance, okay? How to give you options for takedown. When that man throws that wild hook punch, because you're forcing him to, he don't have a choice. Look where your body is. Look where your body is. Here, here it comes. Look where your body is. Your body's here. Now, all he's going to do is either pull back up and elbow you in the head, or he's going to try to pull out and move away so you can do this. But if you ever get a chance, people understand something. If this man is a better fighter than you, what are you going to do? See, that's something that a lot of martial artists don't address. And we need to address. Because no matter how bad you think you are, there's somebody out there who's bad than you. And you go around thinking you can kick all this behind, and you come across a guy who got better fighting skills than you got, or he get the upper hand on you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to stop this man from hurting you? Do you know what to do? Do you know how to tie him up? Do you know how to lock him up? That's why we use the stamina training. That's why we use the stamina suit, the suit you've seen before. Because we fight with the suit and teach our students how to lock the man up in the suit so he can't punch you no more. He can't hurt you no more. You gotta know how to stop a person from hurting you. What do you do? One method of stopping a man from hurting you after you identify he, 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 he's a better fighter than you is this. Getting in here and doing this. Every professional boxing match ever, when it gets like this and the two fighters are dead tired and they start doing this, hitting each other in the back of the head and that's all they can do, right? What does the referee do? as far as punching and kicking is concerned over here. So in order to use your skills, punching and kicking, they break you. But you know what? If you have a fighting mentality, and if you have a martial arts mentality, that's what you're going to do. Now a self-defense mentality, you're going to break. 
Because in your mind, you're looking to do this so you can use your distance, so you can start using your kicks, boom, and you start bam, 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 using your distance fighting. There's no break. You lock the person up, you get into this situation, and guess what? It's now become a grappling situation. But I tell you what, if you understand the principles of what can happen to you when you do this, now, let's go. Maybe I'm going to try to get out of this or do something, right? You can slide, try to hit me in my face, you can pull that hand out, and you can come back into that situation. Did you see what happened? Pull the head out, and you can come back in here, and now you can become a headlock, or he's squeezing me in my neck. Now he's trying to take me down, and you see all of that stuff that's going on? That's because I never control the hands. Once you got them locked up here, if you slide your hands in here and control your hands or control his hands, there's no way possible. And look what I did. When I slid my hand in here, I grabbed my own garment. I don't care if it's a jacket. I don't care if it's a coat or a T-shirt. Here, he can't slide that arm out. That forces him to try to fight with one hand. Now. I took away his other hands. All I have to do is be successful enough to keep this here. And this man is not going to do anything with me. Now that gives me the ability right now to do this. Again, fingers in the eyes, turn the face, go off into jujitsu. See, I came from a fighting situation. I came from a fight that I was losing. I cut the person off. I might have threw some head butts in there to get his focus off and slid my hand in. Turn this around, fingers to the eyes, here, lock up in the A-lock position, right there, because it's here for me. If he try to pull out and I shove, I got the break. I got the break and I keep my head down. I don't go like this because out of desperation, bam, he's gonna fire off, hit you with that rifle with that punch again, buckle your knees, you lose this. I keep my head down. He can punch me and I'll go right into my takedown. And when I go into the takedown, I got the arm bar. I still got the arm bar right there. And then I attack the vision again, attack the groin. I stomp him in his head, I finish him off. Here, hands in here. I don't care if it's left hand, right hand. You don't hold out here. You slide one hand in and grab your garment. Use your headbutt. That changes the man's focus immediately. As soon as they grab, as soon as you grab each other back, headbutt and slide that hand in. Use this other hand and elbow to position yourself to do what you need. That's one way. What if you let the hand go and the hand now came like this? What do you think he's gonna do? Headlock. Now this is why you have to have what we call a flow and a rhythm, knowing what is he gonna do, what's available. Here, nothing's available for him. All he can do is squeeze my back. Squeeze my back, squeeze my back, squeeze my back, and, that's, and try to take me down. But look at this. As long as I got one hand, I don't have both hands in here, right? I got one hand, and he squeezed my back and reached me, I put a thumb in his eye. That's going to relieve that pain, okay? Now, if I get two hands in here, watch this. If I get two hands in here, I lock him up. He ain't got anything. And I start with my head butt, and I start dropping knees into his kneecap, into his groin, and then I pick my choice on which side I'm gonna lock up after I start going into my rhythm. But the, the key is this. Here, if I decide to come from here and go like this with both my the knees have to work. Knee to knee, knee to thigh, knee to groin, it doesn't matter. It don't matter. A knee is a knee. And if you understand the way I am trying to get you to understand, trying to explain to you, Use whatever is available. I don't care if you spit in the man's face, stomp on his chin, kick him in the groin, slap him in the end, do whatever you have to do. The thing is to do not focus on one type of training that you may have, one art. It's not going to work. Whatever is available. If the man sticks his head too close to me over here, I'll bite his ear right off his head. I'll bite his ear. I'll munch down on that ear and rip it right off his head. Right off. Because that is pain that is going to take his mind off of whatever he might be trying to do to me. And that's important for you to understand. Okay? So off of that hook punch, when you can, like I said, you can come in and you can just lock him up. Or that hook punch can come in here. And you find yourself here. And where is the man going to go? Like I said, you got to find yourself. got to know when you close this distance with this guy. When you broke, you gave him nothing from this. Because this will give a man nothing. 
and he goes for that Hail Mary, and it comes. You got to work. I want to show you some stuff from here. If you shut the distance down from here, like I told you, you stop them from here, people, please don't take my word for it. Try it. If it makes sense, use it. If it don't make sense, throw it out. Stick your hand in here, grab your garment, and you see what's available to this man. You grab both arms here, if you're smart and quick enough, and that's why I say sometimes it's smart fighting. Smart fighting. We, we, we may know what to do, but at the time our mind goes blank. If you can remember, then you can stick both hands in there. And then you headbutt and using your knee. Now I'm going to use, to say, uh, Scott, no, he got a bad back, excuse me, Sister James. Okay, come in here. 